Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our two-part class on Japanese candlesticks. Now, tonight's class will be on learning to read and understand candlesticks and candlestick patterns. And then tomorrow night's class will be interpreting those patterns and adding them into your trading strategy and using them to set stop loss and take profit points and to set um, entry and exit points, transactional signals. So let's get started with tonight's class. Now, remember, ETX is a regulator provider, so I'm required to give you a risk warning. So let me read that and get that out of the way. Trading in the financial markets may result in the loss of your deposited funds. Please ensure that you fully understand the risks or seek independent advice if necessary. ETS Capital provides an execution-only service, and therefore any market analysis, opinion, commentary, or other information which is provided during this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be a personal recommendation or construed as advice. All traders must understand that there's a high element of randomness to the markets, and therefore, they may experience both winning and losing trades while following a strategy. Different traders following the same strategy will achieve different levels of performance. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. And for those of you that are joining us through the internet and don't know much about ETX, we're a fast-growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority. And although binary options were not a regulated product, they were added to the FCA control on January the 8th, but we will be discontinuing them probably this week, the end of February, uh, and they'll be no longer available on our platform. And remember, ETX also is a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with ETX, you have many choices. You can use our all new Trader Pro platform, which is simply our web-based platform. You sign in with your username and password, and off you go. And if you don't know how to use our brand new uploaded, updated Trader Pro platform, we offer classes on a weekly basis. It's a great trading platform. If you're still using the old one, just click on the upper tab and switch to the new, and you can always go back to the old one if you like. And for those of you who want a more professional environment, you can download our MT4 platform. And as I said, on our, if you use our new ETX Pro platform, if you just find a tab up here, if you go to the new platform and don't like it or want, want to go back to your old platform, just click up there and exit to the new or the old platform. And we offer some of the fastest, most advanced charts on the new ETX Pro platform. So everything we talk about tonight for using Japanese candlesticks, you can do right on the charts on our platform or save them as you go along. You can upload them, download them, set the themes, put all the indicators and oscillators on them, and you can also save all of your settings. They are some of the best charts available in the marketplace today. So let's get started talking about Japanese candlesticks. Now, I've given you some handouts so that you can remember a lot of the stuff we talk about tonight, but in case you don't, and want to see a recorded version of tonight's class, just use the same link you used tonight to come to the class, and that should be available in about 24 hours. So candlesticks are a form of charting developed by the Japanese rice traders in the 17th century. A legendary rice trader known as Hamona is credited with the development and use of this form of charting and it was later introduced to the Western world. Now, <clears throat> candlesticks have been around for a very, very long time. And they, the strategies and the explanation of candlesticks, although they weren't developed for the Forex market, were, about, were developed for trading. <clears throat> but there are some misunderstandings about candlesticks. Candlesticks are not just charts. They're part of a trading and charting system, and you have to understand how to read the candlesticks. Too many traders contact me all the time and say, oh, I'm using candlesticks. And I'll say, oh, how interesting. You just started trading last week. Yeah, yeah, well, I see all the reds and the greens, so I know what the market's doing. But candlesticks have very little to do 
with the number of reds and greens you see on a chart. And it can be deceptive. Now, years ago, when we had to chart by hand, or we didn't really have these advanced HTML and Java charts, we used black and white bodies of a candle. It wasn't until recently that we were able to use reds and greens and change. You can use purple and orange. It doesn't make a difference, as long as you know which one is bullish and which one is bearish. Now, you need to learn how to read these candlesticks and what they're trying to tell you. Because you see down the road, it's got very little to do with reds and greens or blacks and whites. So the first thing we need to learn is how we use the data to make this candlestick. So whether you're using a 15 minute chart or a one hour chart or a one month chart, for whatever time period you're using, you would make one candle. So if we're using a 15 minute chart, every 15 minutes you would make a candle. If you're using a one hour chart, every one hour you would make a candle. And you use the open price, the price when that time period starts, you would use the close price for when that period ended. You'd also put a dot on that chart for the highest price it went to in that period and a dot for the lowest price it touched in that period. At, you'd go back to the open, you draw a line across, you draw a line across for the close, and you would connect those two lines to form what's called the body of the candle. You would then draw a line from the body to the high and a line from the candle to the body, to, for, to the, the low. And these are called wicks or shadows. You have the upper wick and the lower wick. The wicks are very, very important. Also, is so is the body. Now, if it happens to be that you stepped down, imagine it's a ladder. If you step down from the open to the close of that period, it was a bearish session. So you would paint that candle red. If you stepped up from the open to the close in that period, you would paint that candle green. And that is the difference between the reds and the greens. Okay. Red means that period was bearish and green means that period was bullish. Now, in order to create a candlestick chart, you must have a data set that contains the open, the high, the low, and the close of each portion of the candle. Now, it's all about the shape and the size of the candlestick. So before we go in to learning how to, or using these on an actual chart, there are six scenarios or six stories that the candlestick can tell you. Now, remember the entire battle in the Forex market, the CFD market, in the financial market is a continuous battle between the bulls and the bears or to fit Japanese candlestick is a continuous battle between good and evil. Although bears and bullish are not the same, they're not good and bad, but this is ongoing battle. And each one of the candles can help you understand the battle. Okay. Now, if you think about it, <clears throat> it's a, it's a, it is a battle between supply and demand. When there's more supply, price goes down. When there's more demand, price goes up. But the first thing one has to do when one looks at a chart is to understand this battle and know who is in control. So, like I said, candlesticks, the first part is this simple explanation of the battle. So we have these six different types of candles which cover all the basic shapes and sizes a candle can make. So I used to explain this in the terms of a football game. I've moved up more to something about a tug of war. Okay. So imagine you have two teams on either side of a lake or a stream. Yeah. Eight or ten guys on one side, eight or ten guys on the other, or girls, whichever. Okay. And they're pulling back and forth. Now, sometimes the guys on the left pull harder and the guys on the right, some of them fall into the stream. And but then eventually they get their footing back and pull some of the guys on the other side in. 
And then at the end of the tug of war, they're all just started out where they are. They're all wet and full of mud, but they all started out where they were. Or you could have that the guys on one side yanked really hard and pulled a whole bunch of those guys back in. And they kept pulling and pulling. They pulled them all in, but then they were able to pull a couple back out of the stream. And it was this battle. So the, the first and most common candlestick, or one of the most common patterns, or shapes, shall we say, is the white candle over here. And what this candle tells us is that the bulls, the guys on the left-hand side of the stream, were in control. They yanked really hard, and they made, head, they made headway. The guys on the other side yanked back and made a little headway. But ultimately, at the end of the session, those guys on the left-hand side had pulled in four or five guys on the right-hand side. They're still in the stream. They can't get their footing back, and the guys on the left are controlling that session for that 15-minute period or the one-hour period. Then you have the exact opposite. Okay. The guys on the right controlled the overall battle, exactly opposite left, and that's why it's colored in. Then we have number three. Now, these have names as we go on farther because these are also position candles and trading candles. But right now, we're just discussing the battle of the bulls and the bears. So over here in number three, we have a very narrow candlestick. That means the guys on the left yanked a little bit, the guys on the right yanked a little, but they weren't able to move anybody in any which way. And they almost ended up just where they started. They just tired themselves out of yanking, but nobody controlled anything. Number four, whether it was the bulls or the bears, the left hand or the right hand side, didn't much matter because they, they made no headway. You see between the open and the close, there was virtually no move. But at some point, the guys on the right bank got some energy and yanked really hard and were able to pull those guys on the left-hand side back in. And that's why you see the big lower shadow. But then by, before the, the, the session was over, they all ended up where they started. Five is exactly the reverse of that. Okay. And then number six is there was a huge battle. The bears pulled, the guys on the left pulled and pulled some guys into the stream. The guys on the right pulled and but at the end of that session, they all ended up with the same amount of guys in the stream on both sides and ended up right where they started. So this tells us what that battle would be. So what do you think? And we're not even talking about any learning anything yet. Let's use some general storytelling that we just talked about here. What do you think would happen in the next candle after this candle? Because this is telling us the bulls controlled it from the very beginning of the session to the very end of the session. We would think that the next candle would open upward. Because we would because this was only a timing thing. It meant at the end of that timing session, the bulls were still in control. Over here, we have huge indecisiveness. So we're looking for something to give market direction. So we're we're actually using these to understand what is happening in the marketplace. So that's the first thing you want to do when you look at a candle. Okay, then we have certain candles that tell us something more important. And the first one of these candles, we call a marabuzu. A marabuzu actually happens, if you think about it, you would think it very rarely happens, but it happens actually happens quite often. Now, if you look at these candles, whether they're black and white or red and green, what do you notice about them? They have no wicks, no shadows. So on the white marabuza, which is a bullish candle, this is telling us that from the beginning of that session to the very, very end, that those bulls were running full out. The bears never got one second of breathing space. 
They never got one second of control. And that's why there's not even a little wick going down. And it means those bulls were so dominant that they didn't push it up and ease back down a little bit. There is no wick on the upper top. That means those bulls kept pushing it to new highs till that session ended. We have the exact opposite when we have it colored in black. Now, that doesn't mean that the market is soaring up. It soared up during that session because the next session could be when we have indecisiveness because it could mean that the bulls exhausted themselves. You know, there's only so many buyers in the market. Those buyers could have burned themselves out or pushed the price too high, and they're waiting to re-enter the market when the price falls a little bit down. Or did they buy up everything and they're just waiting for something to continue pushing them up and they need some motivation? It could be a lot of things happening in the next candle, but we know what happened in that session. So Amara Buza, when it appears, is a very important candle. So when we see a bullish Marabuzu appear in a sideways pattern or at, in a downtrend, that's telling you that we see a full market reversal and it should begin, the an uptrend should begin and it should be a relatively strong uptrend, especially when it appears in an area of congestion. So in other words, if we were looking at a downtrend here, and then the downtrend went into this area of congestion, and then out of that came a Marabuzu. That means the market really made a big decision. Okay. We have the opposite in a uptrend reversing into a downtrend. So it's a, a very important signal. Then we have spinning tops. Okay, to be honest with you, I don't pay any attention to spinning tops. Spinning tops appear often. And a lot of times they don't tell you anything. Because first of all, we have the shape of the, the, the candle that we see the open and the close were relatively the same. So we know there's some market indecisiveness. And we have equal wicks both pushing up and down. So it really depends on where it is placed and where it appears. But remember, neither the buyers nor the sellers could gain an upper hand. But when it sits like this, it's often referred to as a spinning top. So you need to, you know, and the fact is we're going to come across a lot of weird names. You don't have to remember the names. You have to remember when you see something look like this, that it's telling you something. But when they appear in an uptrend or a downtrend, a spinning top indicates weakness among the bears and a potential change in the interruption of a trend if we have a downtrend, if it appears in an uptrend, it is the opposite. Now, a more telling signal is a doji. And if you notice, a spinning top and a doji look similar. What is the difference? A doji has almost the equal open and the close. Now, it should be exactly equal when we're looking in the commodities market or in the stock market. In the Forex market, a slight difference is acceptable. The reason being is the Forex moves in, in pips. And for the euro to be a 123.9421 and then open at 123.9422 is such a, a small amount but it would give you a difference between the open and the close. Where for a stock, if it's, Apple was trading at $797.50, okay, it's not 50 and a half cents. So Apple should end up at that same, because you know stock market doesn't move that fast. So it should end up at the same price, okay, if it's forming a real doji. Same thing if you're looking at gold and gold is trading at $1,250.20, it should end up at $1,250.20. But if it ended up at $1,250.49, so you had a slight difference between the open and the close, it is acceptable. And a doji, okay, um, conveys a sense of total indecision or a tug of war between the buyers and the sellers. 
prices move above and below the open level during the session, but close at or near the open level. The result has been a standoff. Neither the bulls nor the bears were able to gain control and a turning point could be developing. So we have to always look at where a doji appears in a trend. So when we see a doji in a trend and we can see that in relationship to the overall price movement and in relationship to a trend line, we can then use it to make some decisions. But a doji does happen to appear often and so does a spinning top. Okay. So we have to use that more in a broader interpretation. Okay. But now they have the basic idea of what candlesticks indicate with their bodies and wicks. Let's cut our teeth on some comp simple and uncomplicated patterns. Okay. Now, this is the position of candlesticks. Now, we talked about standalone candles, and there's a lot of them. Okay. We, and we have something called a star position. A star position is when the next candlestick gaps up or looks like it gaps up or under the previous candle. So it looks like the star the 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 next this can the current candlestick is floating above in the heavens or in the sky above the previous candlestick. Okay, that's a simple one. I don't pay much attention to it. They appear very very often. But then we have, and you again, you don't have to remember all these names. Some of the names are ridiculous. Some of the explanations are just about as ridiculous. But we have shooting stars and inverted hammers. As you notice, they look exactly the same. It's just what, where they appear. Shooting stars appear in an uptrend. Inverted hammers appear in a downtrend. and. The names has come from the general look of what that candlestick is. Here, it, it's above, and it's got this big above push. Ladies and gentlemen, you keep writing in questions. I don't have anywhere near the time to answer your questions because you're writing in questions that don't have to do with what we're talking about at the moment. Okay, so if you follow along and we don't cover what you're, you want to ask, okay, so don't look at the patterns and the handouts I gave you and just say, oh, what is this? What is that? Because we'll get to it when we can. Okay. And so I don't want you to feel that I'm ignoring you. Okay. But let's just go in order. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, hammers and hanging men, again, depend on where they appear in a trend. But when they do appear, you have to notice them. But like I said, in most cases, they don't tell you anything unless they actually appear in a, excuse me, a well-developed uptrend or downtrend. Okay. And they look just like their names. Okay, so a hammer would appear at the end of a downtrend, it would tell you that downtrend is ending, where a hanging man would appear in an uptrend. So remember, there's the exact opposite of each other. And we have all of these for all of these different ones in a uptrend and a downtrend. So again, you just have to remember the shapes and say, ah, that's supposed to be telling me something. You don't have to remember what they're called. Now we come to one of my favorite candles. I rely on them quite often because they're very, very specific patterns or very, very specific positions. And this is called a harami. Now there's all different types of slightly different types of interpretations. And you'll find this with lots of candlesticks, not how you use them as strategies, but what they're supposed to be. Now harami in Japanese means pregnant. That means the current candle must be fully contained in the body of the previous candle. 
So in other words, imagine a pregnant animal, a pregnant woman, uh, a pregnant anything. Okay. The baby is fully contained within the body of the, the mother, not out shooting out the ear and you don't have one leg coming out the, uh, the eyeball. It's fully contained. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's an upper or a lower. It doesn't matter where it sits in the pregnancy. It just must be fully contained. That means not just the body. But the legs and the arms or the wicks and the shadows, everything must be within the body of the previous candle. Now, I bring down the rules even a little tighter, and I say that the current candle must be the opposite color of the previous candle. So if we see right here, we have a bearish, a bullish harami. That means the or the bullish mother, the next candle, which is telling you that it is Harami, must be bearish, just like you see in this pattern. A lot of the interpretations, a lot of the rules don't require this. But I want my candlesticks as precise as possible. A Harami is one of the most common candlestick patterns you'll come across. So it's important to recognize it to understand what it means and to understand its limitations. A harami is a two session reversal pattern because it requires the first session candle to interpret the second session. It is made up of two candlesticks and applies that the price is about to turn. It is indicated by the small body of the opposite color, completely contained with the body of the previous session. Now, this is where the rules vary. It is not essential for the two candles to be opposite colors, but this tends to give it more a reliable signal and more credence. I say it must, if you want to call it a harami and call it a signal, okay, one being the same color, it's still a harami, but it's not a harami signal. So a bullish harami shows the sellers are beginning to dominate as they come back into the market. Whereas a bear, bearish harami has a shadow that extends beyond the body of the previous candle. Some traders wouldn't regard this as a true harami. Period, the end, it is not. Because this means, however, its body is entirely within the previous green candle. Doesn't mean anything. Like I said, you can have a pregnant animal or a pregnant person and have one leg coming out of its ear and one leg coming out of it if it's, you know, whatever. Everything must be contained properly. So I'll be blunt with you. A harami doesn't always live up to its hype. While it's touted as a reversal indicator, and that's exactly what it is, you may find yourself disappointed by its reliability. And this is why we want to make the rules as defined as possible, because that means that you will get more right than you will get wrong. So be aware of Harami and watch what they are trying to tell you about market sentiment. But don't have blind faith in them. Make sure they're fully developed and look closely at where they're appearing in a trend. Okay. So as I told you, it was not a lot more than just the reds and the greens on a chart. So there are three basic sets of chart patterns. Now, I didn't make up this chart, or I didn't make up the names of these on this chart. I just found it in the internet put here. Okay, so I just call them singles, doubles, and triples. Somebody here was cute and named Lonesome Cowboys, two for tango and three musketeers. So we have single candlestick patterns. Okay, we talked about marabuzo, spinning top, doji, hammer, hanging man. These really are just saying, hey, watch me. Because they appear, a single candle by itself appears quite often. And they really don't have anything that, that's fully reliable. You need to use them as just maybe alerts, maybe saying, look at me, maybe saying, get prepared. Then we go over to, to doubles. These are two candlesticks. These two candlesticks together give you something more important because now it's combined two sessions. So if you're looking at a 15-minute candle, 
That means it's, it's now combined the last half hour of Priceman. Looking at a, a one hour chart, you know, and you're seeing one in relationship to the other. Okay. And then from there, we're going to go on to the triples. And triples are very, very reliable. Okay. Now, in the doubles, and they're on the sheets I gave you. So everything is laid out and given to you and shown with explanations and, and everything else to help you along the way. But we have bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing. Okay. And they are just the reverse of each other. So a bullish engulfing appears in a downtrend. Okay. What you have is your most recent candle, the current candle, okay, is the opposite color of the previous candle. So in a downtrend, we're looking for a opposite color or we're looking for a bullish candle. Okay. It's thought now it's not a Harami because it's actually reversed because the candle on the right, the most recent candle is bigger than the candle on the left, but it fully engulfs the body of the previous candle. Some people even multiply and want double the size of the previous candle, okay? Or want, some people want 20% bigger, okay? But it must be larger than the previous candle in the opposite direction. When that appears in a downtrend, that's telling you that you have a bullish engulfing. It means the bulls are now taking over the market and we're looking for an end of that downtrend. It will eventually hopefully go into an uptrend, doesn't mean that it's going to go right into that uptrend, okay? But the bulls are starting to take control of the market. Okay. A bearish engulfing appears at the end of an uptrend and will tell you the exact opposite. But this is one of the reasons it's telling you that who's taking control and what's about to happen, but it doesn't tell you the market's going to reverse immediately. So like on the candle here, we can see that yes, we got to push up, but the bear, the bulls weren't exactly sure. So the market recovered a little bit, went into congestion, and then the bear, the bulls took final, con final control of the market. But it told you that that downtrend had ended. Now, from here we go to bullish tweezers. Tweezers have very specific rules. And tweezers look exactly like tweezers. You must have there are two candles. There's two candles, and the bodies have no upper wicks, and the bodies are the same size, and they have virtually the same shadow to the same price. And this is what a bullish tweezer would appear at the end tell you that a downtrend is over and the bears, the bulls have taken control of the marketplace. Okay. When you see them, they're quite obvious because look at what they look like. Okay. They don't happen that often because you can have something that looks like it, but it's got a lower or it's got a drop of an uptrend. You know, it's got a drop of an upper shadow or the, the bodies aren't exactly the same. So you can freelance your explanation, but a true bullish tweezer is exactly the same. A bearish tweezer is just the reverse. Then we have evening stars and morning stars. Candlestick patterns may appear as singles and doubles or trios. We just looked at the lonesome cowboys and the tangos. But here's a group of three candlestick patterns that may be inspired. And I told you, like whoever you know came up with this thing, three musketeers. Again, I call them the trios. Okay. A lot of people use morning stars. I don't pay any attention to them because I just think that they are too complicated to actually spot in the markets. Okay. And because you're using three weird, odd candles together. They don't happen that quite that often, but I think, personally, I think they happen more randomly than they do anything else. But a morning star 
is a long red candle that is followed from the previous that first of all a morning star must appear in a downtrend so you have a continuous bearish candle then you get a small body candle what does it tell you in market indecisiveness and then you go to the opposite color candle or bearish candle a bullish candle that dominates the market okay. so what this is telling you is the bears have burned out that downtrend they had a breather there in indecisiveness and then the bulls took control so this happens during the next period with, with the long green candle. The rampaging bulls cause the bears to scamper away. Okay. That's a morning star. Evening star is the exact reverse, and it appears at the end of an uptrend. Okay. I look more for at an uptrend. I look for my doji. Okay. And I see that telling me the trend is reversing. But, you know, it's very rare that you get them as defined as you have in these pictures. But then we go on to the next triple. And these are some of the most reliable signals. We call them three white soldiers and three black crows. Now, we could call them three green soldiers and three red crows because they're all just depending whether it's a bullish or bearish. But in a downtrend, when we get three back-to-back -back green candles, each one getting larger in size, that is called three white soldiers. Three white soldiers denote a full market reversal. When it appears, they are very, very reliable, and we're most likely going to go into a very strong uptrend. The three black crows is the exact opposite. And it's telling us we're going, it's at the end of an uptrend and tell us the markets have fully reversed. Now, because it's a three session candle, that's an important candle because it's three different trading periods, three continuous trading periods. And that's telling us that those bulls or the bears have really come back to dominate the markets. Then we go to the last, which is the three inside up and three inside down. These are so complicated for me to explain to you and so difficult to see in a chart. Okay, this sometimes are overlooked, but they are pretty reliable. Okay. The three inside, uh, three inside up appears in a downtrend. Okay, so again, we have the downtrend moving down, and we have the bearish candle. Then we get a bullish candle, and then we get a bullish candle that not only is bullish, but it exceeds the high of the previous bearish candle. So that's telling you the markets have fully dominated. Now, it sounds like, it's exactly like the evening star or the morning star, but there's a big difference. You didn't have the candle of indecisiveness, and your last candle was not as big as your previous candle, where in the three inside up or three inside down, you've now covered the entire body of that previous bearish candle. And it's more important only because it's stronger, but we can also use this, and we're gonna use this tomorrow, to help us set entry and exit points, stop loss and take profit points with this pattern when we see it appear. And then of course we have the three inside down, which is the opposite, which appears at the end of an uptrend. But see, now it's time to start moving into action. So now when you've gone through all the various candles, Either you are ready to go to the trading battlefield with the newly acquired knowledge, or you want to shout, stop. I am so confused. All these funny names and shapes, and you can't remember any of these. And the fact is, it's difficult. Okay. 
I'm not a big candlestick trading fan. I like bar charts, but I use candlesticks. Don't misunderstand me. And candlesticks can be very reliable if you know how to use them and you use them often because it's a matter of getting your eye recognized, ready to see them. And you need a practice looking at the charts. But tomorrow I'm gonna to also show you some very, very easy ways that you can find these signals. Because today with computers, you don't need to go looking for these and spend hours looking through them and searching through your charts because you could spend forever trying to find them. And the fact is you need to see them when they're emerging because to go back, like I've looked on the chart and shown you, you know, how it appears, you know, five candles doesn't help you with your trading now. So you've got to see them as they're emerging. And tomorrow I'm going to show you some secrets to be able to notice these and find these with simple computer tools. And then we'll talk about how to just tell the story of what candlesticks are telling you. And then we'll look at tomorrow entry and exit points and how to use candles for signals as well as entry and exit points. So be prepared for tomorrow night. Take those handouts I gave you and start looking at them and start, again, don't remember the names of them. Don't even really have to remember the interpretation. When you see it, you should be able to see them and, uh, and explain it because you understand what the candles are saying. So if you want, watch this recording again tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon when it's available. And then also go through those charts I gave you. Go through the experiment. And then tomorrow night, we're going to be jumping forward and learn how to put these right into your trading strategy. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for trading with ETX. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Good night now.